Right, so what's just happened now is there is some kudu alarming at the back and I kid you not, these lions jumped up. Uh, they didn't even give it a second thought. One lioness has run back to the car, that's why you saw Sebastian panning like that, he was trying to keep on it. Now there go the adults and the cubs have been told to stay put. This is a very good sign for us of course. There's a lioness coming right towards the car. And if you're wondering why all of a sudden your screen is black and white, you can stop banging your computer now. We are in infrared. Because <laughs> I know that's the first thing I would do, you know. If I haven't switched it on and off again, then, you, and then I'll bang, you know, sort of give it a beating. <laughs> then try and get it to work again. But she's walking right next to the car, and she's approached us. And, and if you are worried if our, that our safety is in jeopardy, don't worry, it's not. She wouldn't walk here if she didn't feel comfortable with us and she's not interested in us. We do not look like anything that she, she would want to eat, but they are responding to those alarming, alarm calls of the kudu. I don't know if it's the lions that startled them because it's quite a distance away. And I think that these lionesses know that. I think that they are going to take advantage of the kudu being frightened about something else and then perhaps try and sneak up on them. We'll see. The little cubs now are starting to follow, but they're not supposed to be. They've been told the rest of them all sitting there, but of course, you get one or two that don't like to listen. Is that lion still behind us? Is she gone? Uh, okay. Gone. Yeah, they're all gone. Okay, let's go. Let's keep following the adults then. I think that's what our plan is going to be. So now we need to reverse. I have to put lights on now. That's exciting. Okay. No. Please unhook. Ah, I caught a tree. But I let it go. It was too young to take with. I've been—I was obviously fishing on my holiday as well, so I'm speaking like I'm a fisherman. Okay, we'll just go through here. We'll go back the way we've come. Start to blind the other guests. There's one lioness that's still coming around. Now this is the tough part. Oh my goodness! Look at my little friend that I've got here. Where did you go? Now to try and find them is another story. I think we're gonna to have to actually follow this lioness because I've lost the others now. They moved quite quickly. Like I said, they got up and they raced. We'll wait for this girl to cross the road and we'll follow her in. I'm just gonna turn my lights off. Here she comes. Now I'm not gonna put any lights on her now. Just because they are moving around. We're lucky we've got infrared. Are you a little bit sore? Are those, what are those on her back leg? Are those bite marks and cuts and things? She seems to have... Let's have a look. It looks like it. Hey, it looks like she's... Oh my goodness, you look like you've been in the war. She does look a bit sore. See that back left? Slightly stiff. It almost looks like she's stiff in her hips. So maybe she has had a battle. Things like this can often happen when lions are hunting, taking down large prey. You can imagine they can injure them. I definitely think she's slightly sore and it could be why she's hanging back as well. So she might not necessarily partake in the main hunt. You know what I'm thinking, Seb? I wonder if we don't go around onto that other road that we were on earlier, Gwari Pan Road, because I think that's where they're going. Let's do that. And she's just going to slowly start catching up with them. But I think that's the direction that they're going in. We're not going to hang around with the cubs. We want to see the action. Oh, there's another lioness. Okay. But I'll tell you right now, a lioness with an injury doesn't last for long, especially when your dinner is standing right in front of you. You will all of a sudden get superpowers. It's amazing what adrenaline can do. There's one lioness just here. Also disappearing now into the thicket. See how quiet they're also trying to be. So I think that she's got a combination. She looks slightly stiff in the hips, but I also think she's watching where she puts her feet. And if you listen very carefully when this lioness starts to walk, listen to how loud it actually is when she steps on the dry grass. You can actually hear it. So as soon as she takes her next step, I'll become silent and listen very carefully. So then maybe turn your volume up a little bit more. And without that wind, it means that they have to move a lot slower and more carefully 
than the, what they would if they had the wind to muffle their sound. But ears pricked forward, trying to pinpoint where those kudu were, Nunnison. you hear that? You hear that crunching? Very subtle, but it's there. I can even hear it with my own ears. Now, if I can hear it, imagine something like a kudu, which has got much larger ears and is able to pick up sounds from all sorts of directions. They would hear those lines coming and they would know that something, something suspicious was going on. Yes, I think I'm going to take a gamble here. Let's go around. I just want to tell Rexon, Rexon, Rexon Taylor. Rex, I'm just going to loop around on the other side to see if they've popped out on the other road. Okay, right, let me put lights on. Let me get spotlight as well. Oh, we've got all these little gadgets. Okay, we're going to quickly go a little bit quicker and just jump on over here. I'm not going to try not to follow them now off-road because you've seen that the lions are even trying to be as quiet as they can so it's not going to help if I go bashing through the bushes now so we will try and stick onto the roads as much as we can and what we will do is we'll listen again if we hear obviously a chase or if we hear a distress call then we know we can run on them but we do want to give these animals the best possible chance they've got youngsters they need to feed they need a meal too and it just wouldn't be fair on us if we weren't barging through the bushes when they were actively uh, after something and we know that they definitely want something so we're going to try and find the best spot we will sit and wait and be patient just as Ali was patient for most of the afternoon and uh, we'll go back across to them and see how she's enjoying the man with all the rosettes